Hi everyone. In this lesson I'd like to look at an application involving quadratic equations and in particular a motion problem. It says during the first part of a canoe trip Alex covered so many uh, kilometers at a certain speed and he then traveled uh, 24 kilometers at a speed that was a little bit slower. And if the total time for the trip was 8 hours, what was the speed on each part of the trip? Now the purpose of problems like this uh, really aren't to prepare you to solve um, problems of this exact nature in real life because most people don't don't ask questions like that. It's really an, a translation exercise in translating uh, word problems into the language of algebra where they are much more easily solved. And real life problems can be very complex and unless we develop this skill um, then those problems are are unsolvable for us. So let's start off with the most important thing of every word problem, and that's to identify your variables, the things that, that we don't know. Now a good place to start is with what the problem asks us, and it says, what was the speed on each part of the trip? Okay, and we know that there's two parts of the trip. So let's let x be the speed during the first part of the trip. Okay. And then on the second part of the trip, it says it was four kilometers slower. Okay, so x is the speed during the first part of the trip. And then x minus four is going to be the speed uh, during the second part. Okay, now it's always good to write that down because that fixes in our mind exactly what the variable is that we're looking for. And notice in this case, these motion problems, there's actually quite a lot of variables, things that, that are changing in the problem. For example, there's two motions, and each of these motions has its own distance, its own rate, and its own time. And so there's really six variables. And so let's make a little chart <clears throat> to organize this information. Uh, let's see, which one do I want here? There it is. So let's draw a little chart, a little box here. like this and I have the motion during the first part of the trip and then I have the motion during the second part of the trip and I know that each of those parts has its own rate its own time and its own distance and I know that the those variables are related to one another because rate times time always equals distance now it tells me that during the first part of the trip that Alex went a distance of 60 kilometers. So I know that. And during the second part of the trip, he went 24 kilometers. So I know that information. Now I don't know what the rate is for the first part. And I don't know what the rate is for the second part. That's what we're going to solve for. Now I also don't know the time for the first part. The problem does give us a time. It says though that the total time was eight hours. So so the time for the first part wasn't eight hours, it's something less than that, right? And the time for the second part was something less than that, but together they add up to be eight hours. All right, but I do know that the time during the first part is is x. That's what I, I called my variable and the time or the rate for the second part is x minus four and those are in both kilometers per hour. Now I know that since rate times time is equal to distance, if I was to divide both sides of that equation by the rate, that my time would equal the distance divided by the rate. So this time uh, for the first part of the trip has to equal the distance during the first part of the trip divided by the rate. So 60 over x, that represents the time for the first part of the trip, and likewise 24 divided by x minus 4, that represents the time for the second part of the trip. And what I know is that the total time for the trip was 8 hours. So if I add those together, that gives me the total time. Now when I write out this equation, I get 60 over x. You want to think of that 60 over x not just as an abstract uh, algebraic expression, you want to think of that as, well, that's the time for the first part of the trip. And if I add to that, not just an abstract algebraic expression, but if I add to that the 
time for the second part of the trip, I know that that has to equal the total time. So that this isn't just an abstract equation that, that uh, I really have no idea where it comes from. Every single part in the 60 over x, it's not just an abstract 60 over x, that's the distance, 60 kilometers, divided by whatever the rate happens to be. Uh, if it's x, if it was you know 10 or 12 or 15, whatever it happens to be, that that would tell me the time for the first part of the trip. Okay, and likewise for the second part. All right, so now all I have to do is solve that equation. Let's go ahead and multiply both sides by the common denominator, which would be x times x minus 4. And so over on the left-hand side here, I'll have to distribute that to each of the terms. And when I distribute that to the first term, you see that this x is going to cancel this x, and I'll just get the x minus 4 times 60. Let's write that over here. So I get 60 times x minus 4. And then when I distribute over here, you see this x minus 4 is going to cancel the x minus 4. So I'll get the x times the 24, so that's plus 24x. Then over on the other side, I'll get 8x times x minus 4. All right, so let's go ahead and multiply all this out. At least I've gotten rid of my fractions now. So we've got 60x minus 240 plus 24x equals 8x squared minus 32x. So I recognize it's quadratic, and so let's get everything on one side of my equation. Let's, let's take everything on the right. I'd like to have a positive leading coefficient. So I'll have 8x squared. I got a 60x and a 24x. So if I uh, do that, that'll give me 84x, and then I got to subtract it from the 32x. So, so 84 minus 32, I think that's negative 116x, and then I'll bring the negative 240 over. That's plus 240. So, so here I have a an equation, a quadratic equation that I need to solve. I can make it a little bit. Uh, uh, nicer. I, I think 4 goes into each one of these. Let's divide both sides by 4. Make my numbers just ever so much smaller. Okay, so that'll give me a 0 is equal to 2x squared minus, and then I think, uh, let's see, well 4 goes into 125 times and 4 more, so that'd be minus 29x uh, plus 60. Alright, 240 divide 4 is 60. And then I can I can solve this. I want to be able to to uh, figure out what x is, and uh, you might try factoring that. I don't know if that factors or not, but what I can do is I can go to my uh, graphing calculator here, and I can uh, use my quadratic formula that I have programmed into my calculator to see. Um, what the solutions are. All right, so I'm going to plug in a equals 2, b equals negative 29, and c equals 60. And you see that I get solutions of 12 and 5 halves. Now, if those numbers are nice rational numbers, that tells you that you could have factored this. In fact, this will give us an idea how it factors. So, so for this problem, you could just say x equals 12 and x equals 5 halves by the quad program if your teacher lets you do that. I do in my classes. Um, or if you wanted to show uh, how to how to factor it, then you could do it this way. You could write come down a little bit further, x equals 12 and x equals 5 halves and work backwards to actually get the factorization. Right? x minus 12 is 0. Multiply both sides by 2 and bring the 5 over. And it'll turn out that these guys right here are your factors, right? This will factor as 2x minus 5 times the x minus 12. Forgot my equal 0 there. So just double check it. See, here's the 2x squared. Here's minus 24x and minus 5x makes minus 29x in the middle. And there's your 60. All right, so I have my answer. It's either x equals 12 or x equals 5 halves. Well, what was x again? Well, x was the speed during the first part of the trip. And then x minus 4 is the speed during the second part of the trip. Well, notice that if x was 2 and a half for the first part of the trip, then x minus 4 would be negative, wouldn't it? Okay, so this one's not going to work. So this one won't work uh, since x minus 4 would then be negative. 
So that's not going to be one of my answers, but the x equal 12 will work. And so, so my answer then is that the speed during the first part of the trip was 12 kilometers per hour and 8 kilometers per hour for the second part. Now let's see if that works. All right, so, so I've stated my answer. I think that's it. Let's just double check it and by coming up here. Now, if, if he was going 12 kilometers per hour for the first part of the trip and he went 60 kilometers, well, that means he would have gone five, five hours, right? And, and then if he went, went uh, four kilometers per hour less, so that would make eight kilometers per hour for the second part of the trip, and it would take him three hours to go 24 kilometers at 8 kilometers per hour, right? And notice that sure enough then that does add up to give me the 8 hours total time for the trip.